Progress and development can be measured and monitored. That was the idea behind the Millennium Development Goals. But often it's people on the streets who can really tell the difference, especially those who love to listen and then tell you about it or even sing about it. Singing in Sierra Leone. Sometimes it's to help work along, sometimes it's the soundtrack to a lazy day. But sometimes it's a story. Sorry, Condi, Sierra Leone's Stevie Wonder. He's on iTunes and YouTube, but still struggling to make it. Foreign acclaim does not pay his bills. Sorry pays his $8 a month rent by busking the streets of the capital, Freetown. His wife, Sally, is also blind. She makes and sells soap to help out. London, America, UK. One day, sometime we'll go there. Sorry, Condi takes his name from his hey. instrument, the Condi, a handmade thumb piano with an electronic twist. Busking the streets also helps keep his daughter in school. Getting 14-year-old Zainab through school is a big struggle for Sori. Primary education is free in Sierra Leone, but there are extra fees demanded by poorly paid teachers and other costs. I'm not feeling good. The school charges haven't been paid. They've not paid what? School charges, school fees. They've not yet been paid. How much? 32,000. 32,000? Yeah. OK, finish. Sport is on Monday. I haven't got the sports talk. The sports? Yes, Monday. Monday? Yeah. The top is 10,000. 10,000? 10, yeah. Okay. Somehow, Sorry always finds the money. But keeping Zainab out of trouble is more difficult. When did you get pregnant? Zainab lives with her cousins, who have all left school early because of pregnancy. Zainab's not safe. Look at what's happening in this house. Her cousins only made it up to form two and got pregnant. So I do worry that someday it will happen to her. You see? Sorry, Condi and the MDGs, Millennium Development Goals. Not an R&B band, but goals set by world leaders meeting at the UN in 2000. Zainab's future depends on two of these goals, education and women's empowerment. We asked Sorry Condi to help us make a road movie, looking at what's happening with girls' education round the country 10 years after civil war. Sorry's trusted aide is 23-year-old Fode P, who helped with production on Sorry's first album. There are problems with Sorry's old amplifier, but Fode's found him a brand new Chinese-made amp. Fode lost both his parents in the Civil War. 
He survived as a street kid till Jesuits took him in and put him through primary and secondary education. Now he's saving to go to university. An education success story may be a role model for Zainab. Sorry Condis barely ventured out of Freetown since the Civil War started 18 years ago. It's a two-week trip round the country. Just Sorry, Fode P, now Fody the roadie, and whoever else they pick up on the way. Theophilus needs a lift to McKaney. He's a primary school teacher. What's making him angry? Ghost teachers. It's estimated the government has been paying the salaries of 30,000 phantom teachers who don't exist. The money going who knows where. Ghost teachers are a drain on the budget, but the government's now started a roll call of teachers to make sure the money is spent properly. Theophilus says it's an urgent problem. Teachers do retire. Teachers some, do retire. Die. some but die. Like heads of but heads of schools and principals they still maintain their names in the register. The money goes in their pocket, forgetting the fact that they need to delete those names from the register. So there are ghost teachers all over. Sierra Leone spends almost 4% of its GDP on education. Sorry is beginning to wonder how much of it finds its way to the children. This troubadour's not used to touring anymore. I'll stop now. I need to rest. Even though Sori's village is just a few hours away from Freetown, it's three years since he's been back. What's better, bringing up your daughter in Freetown or here? Well, I prefer bringing up my daughter in Freetown. Even though there are so many problems for her in Freetown, at least as I am there, because that's where I live, I can always solve them. One of the problems for girls in rural areas is the long walks to school. But they're lucky. Over a quarter of a million children don't go to primary school at all, and most of them are girls. Sorry Kondi's village is Mange Loko. This is my father. Okay, this is my papa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is his father. This is my father. Back home, Sorry's a success story. His old friend Hassan used to be a small time trader. Hassan did pass his school exams, but no more. Now he's a UU, an unqualified, untrained teacher. The villagers pay him what they can when they can, and often it's not much. Almost half of Sierra Leone's teachers are UUs and often have second jobs to survive. No repairs have been done to the school buildings since 1976. What Sori learns here, there's little incentive for Hassan to train as a teacher. There just aren't enough well-paid jobs, although the government is reviewing teachers' pay. 
Three years ago, Hassan was accepted into a training program. He has the letter. He's just waiting for confirmation of funding. Unfortunately, he's been waiting three years. From since, now up, like since I applied and got this acceptance letter, it's been about three years. It's to go to the training college to get qualified as a teacher. I didn't get an answer. I am praying that we get development in our village. I pray that with education, things will be better for you. All of you. So not much encouragement from Sori's home village. He's starting to think there are no easy solutions. I want one day to go abroad because Sierra Leone is not easy. One day, if I go abroad, I'll be happy. I want to do something proper for Sierra Leone. We've heard stories of schools down the road. Sorry's off to learn more. On the way, Mohammed. He's a motorbike taxi driver and former student at one of the oldest schools in Sierra Leone. They're all on their way to Mataboy. There are no road signs. But the driver does have an escort of sorts. The school here has an impressive list of former pupils, including some major public figures. Sorry, Kondi wants to put on a performance, but the kids get there first. Free primary education has seen a huge increase in pupils here. It's up by half. Now the school has 425 students, but only five teachers and three classrooms. If you could see them, you would see that the children are having difficulties. They have no desks and have to put the books on their laps to write. Half the classes are under mango trees. There are just not enough buildings. So no benches then? They do have benches to sit on, but they haven't got anything to write on. So what about the school's distinguished old boy network? Sorry asks the obvious question. Mr. Headmaster, Mr. Headmaster these people in high places, so what have they done to help the school? These people... These people have not made any effort to move us from under the mango tree. That is why we are still under the mango tree. Apart from the government, it's up to the local people to move these children. I had a better education than them because we had the facilities in school. We had enough decks to write on. These days, children use their lap to write on. That doesn't help their writing skills. When the rains come, the problems really start. Children from the mango tree classrooms pile into the school building classrooms and the entire school comes to a halt. For nine-year-old Fatima, that means losing up to 40 days a year of school. When I come to school in the morning and it rains heavily, my books and uniform get completely soaked. As sorry leaves, burnt out ruins of buildings, a reminder of civil war. Over 1,200 schools were destroyed. And in contrast, the new roads of reconstruction, which take us to Koidu, 
the center for blood diamonds. Experimentalism and the, the Hollywood traditional cop thriller. Can you marry those two? It's not going to work for. Pody's keeping up with the news. He's a glutton for knowledge. There is money round here, and money can be a problem, as Sorry's next encounter shows. Sia Elizabeth Tongu belongs to a women's group which campaigns against teenage marriage. How is Kono? Fine. How is the women's group doing? The group is doing fine. It is doing fine, eh? Yes. Uh, young girls face a lot of challenges. We're concerned about teenage marriages, early marriages, we call them out here. Um, people with money will lure them out of school. It still happens in that. In fact, I have a, a secondary school attached to the institute. What we do is we call the, the parents to meetings so we can all deliberate together and see how we can uh, stop all of this. They're still children. I mean, imagine babies having babies. It's, it's really a serious problem. And then also they drop out of school because they, they cannot continue with school once they get married and get stuck in this uh, marital affairs. In fact, the, the young boys in school are now pregnating more girls than the older men. So that too is a serious problem in the community. There is a law that schoolboys who make girls pregnant must stay away from school while the girls do. And the government's planning to help girls by adding more female teachers. But there are no easy solutions. Mariama didn't get a chance to finish her schooling. At 16, her parents wanted to marry her off to an older man. She ran away, but in the end, she did marry him and had three kids. Like many girls in Sierra Leone, Mariama was married before she was 18, which is illegal here. Now, 10 years on, she's being divorced, and her husband has claimed back the bride money and expenses from her family. I mean, you know, Seeing as your father, your parents were the ones who arranged your marriage. They should have helped you out, eh? not left you to sort it all out alone. Why, when bad things happen, do they leave you to fend for yourself? Why? I don't know. Salo people there who in on the dio I say bo who no go die back on the road teenage pregnancy Sorry's heard nothing yet. This not now that too. Sixteen year old Mammy Musa, her mother and stepfather, need a lift back to their village. Do you go to school? Yeah. What form are you? Form three. Form three. You care you boards. Do you know about girls who get pregnant in school? Since you started school, how many cases of pregnancy do you know of? Answer now, don't be shy. Tell me really. Hmm? Don't be shy, answer me. Can you hear me? But you're not answering. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Since you started school, how many cases of pregnancy do you know of? Many. Well, how many? More than 40. Oh. 50. Are these cases you really know? I don't want you to lie. It's not a lie.
Kenema, the economic heart of eastern Sierra Leone, the country's diamond trading center. <laughs> Juliet is a primary school teacher, volunteer radio journalist, and a single mother. <laughs> Juliet runs a youth program and opens the phone lines every Saturday morning. Most of the time, try I open phone line. I ask people to contribute, but they ask questions uh, about the teenage pregnancy. And most questions that used to come to our studio whenever I'm presenting this program, people say uh, the, the 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 teenagers themselves are responsible, you know, for the problems they usually face. That um, they don't listen to their parents. They always abscond home when they ask. Uh, they ask to go to school. The escape from school, they are always playing to antsy. They want to live big, they want to live with all opportunities. So some t uh, most of the time, they choose to go to the streets and just um, live their own life. I blame the parents, uh, the guidance, I blame the, ch the, uh, uh, the teenagers themselves, and I blame also the schools that these teenagers are attending. We're on our way to T.Y. Island, Sierra Leone's River Island Wildlife Sanctuary. There's someone who wants to talk to Sorry. Mamadou's a boatman transferring tourists to T.Y. Island. He spent a lot of money on his daughter Millicent's secondary education. His daughter's belly business or pregnancy has been a disappointment, especially as it involved her teacher. <laughs> I need to feel better about her first. Right now, I am not happy with her. That's how it is. The story behind my pregnancy is that I was going to school and I suddenly get pregnant. I was in love with my teacher a long time. Since I was in Form 1, he helped me pass my exams and paid for my practical fees and other things. When I told him that I was pregnant, he said, don't tell me that. He said if I was willing, he had the money so I could have an abortion. I said no because some friends have died because of abortion. I prefer to give birth. When Millicent reported her story to the police, she was told the teacher was already in custody on similar charges of sex with a minor, another schoolgirl. Two weeks later, Mamadou, her father, heard the teacher had been released and was back teaching at the school. No one's sure why. I feel bad for the father of the girl. I don't even know what to say. The police and the school authorities ganged up against the father to release this man. The police must have taken a bribe. I don't understand anything. Back to Freetown, where Fody will be helping Sorry record his new album. To my own part, I think education is very, very important. Because if it hadn't been for education, I would have not been what I am today. 
Though the fact that I do not have anything, nobody can come and fool me easily. I know all what is going on, not only in Sierra Leone, but in all the rest of the world. Well, if I have a daughter, I would make sure that I monitor her properly. If she goes to school, I would make sure every day that I see how she's doing in school, whether she's always punctual, whether she takes her classwork seriously. There's a lot riding on Sori Konde's new album, his career and Zainab's future. Zainab's my child, but she has a mind of her own. Even though I really hope she finishes her studies, it's up to her. I'm praying to God that she finishes her education because I believe it will be good for her. If I get money, I will send her to college. If I get money, I believe God will provide. Bebe, yeah, I'm not going